Okay, good evening, listeners. This is Mulberry Bush and Psychic Medium Tree with another episode of Mulberry Trimmings. Tonight's show, like previous episodes, will be on <clears throat> YouTube. And if anyone is interested in seeing the list of songs and related videos for tonight's show, they can also be found on the YouTube playlist. Um, tonight's show is um, titled Zombie. Uh, walking with the Grateful Dead, and uh, we'll be taking calls throughout the show, so feel free to call in. The lines are open, and um, I guess we could do a little bit of talking before I start the next song. Yeah, so if you're a zombie or would like to be a zombie, call in. That's true. You know, um, you know, the zombie, the zombie culture is an actual active thing these days. You know, they. Ha yeah. I know in Atlanta when i was up there two years ago they did have like a march of dimes zombie walk thing where people got dressed up in costumes and walked around like zombies and raised money mm -hmm. and benefit and stuff so that part's fun yeah. but i have to ask you why did the zombie not not cross the road why did the zombie not cross the road yeah i i don't know wait i do yeah um I, you told me because he didn't have the guts. He didn't have the guts. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. Well, if he didn't have the guts, he would have just dragged himself over on two arms, you know, and just kind of be like, where are my legs? <laughs> that was a really great zombie voice, by the way. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. So the, the reason I picked zombies to talk about is because I have a story that uh, I had started it a long time back. And um, in order to do some of the creative side of it and characters that I want to interact with my main hero and all that stuff, I kind of set it to the side because I didn't feel like my mind was ready to process some of the information needed to build the character which I knew in my head, I just didn't know how to tell it to other people, you know? Um, so, and part of that required that I look at the undead and the term Grateful Dead and zombie and what all of that meant. So I don't want to go into my story because I don't oh. want to mess it up and spoil it for people. Yeah, I do want to say as a medium, I've never channeled a zombie. Okay. So they're dead. The they are. The people I channel are all the way 100% dead, bonafide. I, well, the zombie, <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> for the most part, zombies are, are the invention and mythology. They aren't real. They're um, the only some, well, we'll talk about them after the first song. Yeah. But um, in the Haitian culture of voodoo, which is originally of an African lineage in that sense of the word, there is a, and even in the African side, there were um, zombies by what you would think of as a mindless uh, robot slave of the undead type thing. Right, yeah. right. And after the song, we're going to talk about that origin nation of zombies okay let me go ahead and get this next tune going so our side discussion during music is always helpful too i think the zombie is metaphor for the soulless aspect of humanity it comes back from the dead with no real like vampires they're undead too they're soulless but they have their personality the yeah. zombie is not it's grumpy and growl. There is a Drew Barrymore show where she's fighting a zombie virus and has to slowly like come to terms with the fact that she needs to eat raw meat and stuff. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. But uh, it's called the something something diet. I don't want to give. I don't like to talk about stuff I'm not allowed to talk about on my show or whatever. <laughs> but um, for the most part, I think the zombie is is a metaphor for the soullessness of our culture in that it just is there to devour it's not there to serve more of an intellectual purpose or you know any kind of like a, the the vampire is more of a intentional soul stealer monster whereas the zombie and frankenstein even yeah 
is more of a mechanical effect of soullessness. Anyway. So tell us about the origins of zombies, Jeremy. Well, as um, I do know that it has um, roots in Haitian culture, in hoodoo. They do have a, a, a zombie spell that's done on people. Yeah? And what is that spell called? Um, I God, don't remember right this moment. It is called a zombie spell. Yeah. The the Lao L A U that um is the saint of the Haitian hoodoo is Baron Samidi. So typically he's called when they do the spell, but it is very much obvious to all that are involved that it does involve an intoxicant, that there is a drug involved in That's it. That's right. It's the bokors that have a tradition of using oh. like those herbs and shells and fish and animal parts, bones and mm. other objects. Mm. That's that concoction concoction of zombie powders. Uh, it's that tetro dot oxen. Okay. I don't think I'm saying it correctly. Pretty scary either way. A deadly neurotoxin. Okay. It's like in that puffer fish. Like a paralyzing agent. Yeah, and there's even other marine species that have it. So now, it, 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 in a combination, it causes zombie-like symptoms like difficulty in walking and mental confusion and respiratory problems. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I did look at, um, there's something called a zombie ant because there's a lot of theories about why an actual zombie thing has not happened to humans. Like why isn't there, and actually I think MS is a little bit zombie. Like you do walk around with half your body not working when it first <laughs> starts and you are grumpy and you're like all the time, you know, but, <laughs> but you don't eat people's brains and things like that, you know, but, um, there is a fungus that if, affects ants and it first it gets onto the shell of the back of the ant and then Ooh. slowly eventually integrates itself into the bloodstream of the ant and then mind controls the ant whoa so that the ant decides to stop hanging out with all the other ants and it goes toward a leaf that is where the fungus root is growing and it attaches itself to the leaf dying and these funguses have fields of dead ants coming Whoa. to this leaf and like zombies that's so crazy cool <laughs> it's insane and I it's not make-believe either that's a real thing i love that yeah it's crazy well speaking of you know what do zombies eat for school lunches uh oh what do zombies eat for school lunches? Human beans. Human beans. How could I forget <laughs> such a wonderful joke? Do they make them toot? <laughs> Probably. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is so funny. So let me see. The next song that I have on here. Actually, this is a local Florida artist who made it big in L.A. So I'm going to go ahead and play him. Yeah, it's called Zombie Zoo. And what's his name? Tom Petty. Mm-hmm. Gainesville, Florida. So, um, zombies and the soul. But you're really, it's about the Grateful Dead um, more than it is about the zombies. And another interesting thing about the Grateful Dead is for as these are stories about a person that has died and for some reason comes back, right? Now, the, the Denmark story I told? Yeah. Online? If I told it online already, no, am I repeating myself? I want to hear the Denmark story. All right. There's a folklore from Denmark, and the oldest reference we have to it is referencing the folklore. It's not that we have a copy of the folklore anymore, just a reference to it. And it's called Three Pennies. And it's about a soldier that's walking down a road, and he runs across three people that are uh they have grave digging um tools in their hands two guys have a shovel and one guy has a pickaxe and he's like excuse me strangers what are you doing walking down this road at midnight with these pickaxes and stuff and they're like well there's a guy buried across the way and he owed each of us a penny and we'd like to get our penny that he hopefully there's something in there of value that we can take off of his body 
And the soldier says, uh, you know, he doesn't want the body desecrated. And he offers them his last three pennies that he has. And it says, well, my three pennies work and all this other stuff. And they, they end up going their separate ways. Soldier continues to walk down the road. And um, shortly after that, he meets another stranger. And I don't want to spoil the story by telling the whole thing because it's very short and it's very fantastical in that grim fairy tale kind of way. But it's called The Three Pennies. And it's from um, Copenhagen, Denmark. And the oldest reference per Wikipedia is 1850 something. But the folk tale itself goes back hundreds of years before that. So, and in that, the stranger that meets him on the road the second time sends him on a, an adventure and a blessing. And that stranger was the Grateful Dead whose body was honored by not being um, desecrated by those three pennies. How cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's a funny cool. story. And I I also read another one that I think I want to read the whole thing before I go into any kind of detail on it in articulating for my story or whatever. But there is a story that involves someone dying and an angel walking with them for a short time to do the Grateful Dead thing. And that's also where the, the mythos of it comes into folklore is there was this story about a guy and he died and the angel and etc mm -hmm. but i want to read the story first before i talk about that one okay because it's neat yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah, just it neat to me fun. yeah yeah it's cool <laughs> so and that that's really um i i did what i wanted to make sure i researched for myself so i could include it in some of the um inner thoughts on the character that i'm working with that i've already worked i've already we've articulated most of that so yes that's the material i had to work with nice very <laughs> nice well i'm just wondering any listeners out there feel like they're a zombie after work because i found that america people are really lacking in sleep I you call that the zombie syndrome. I think so. There is, uh, there probably is a zombie syndrome in that sense of the word. Yeah. yeah. Where you kind of get on this automatic behavior and you're numb. And that's, you know, when people work too much, that, that is how they feel. They feel exhausted and numb. And the, the care factor goes down. So... It seems I like think, if you um, work less, you get more done. I think there, there's also, um, there's variance in life when it comes to things. You know, I've mentioned a thousand times that we divide the day into three parts. We have sleep, yep. we have work, yep. and we have relaxation. Relaxation and sleep are not the same thing, and work and relaxation are not the same thing. You exactly. can say, I love to do that, but there's a moment where even though you love it, there's work behind it. So your brain is only going to be able to do those three things evenly for a day. So let's say for one day you get your short two hours of sleep, it's going to affect those other 16 hours of you playing and relax, working. Absolutely. And I think other things like certain work is compressed into the pressure that other people would feel an hour was two hours. There's certain work that is so intense on a body and a brain that mm -hmm. even if there was such a thing as the other eight hours I get to relax, it just doesn't account or make up for the, the, the condensed version of work that certain work has to deal with. Yes. So how can you prevent from feeling like a zombie, get enough sleep, and if possible, meditate? That is true. Yep. I also think the best way to not be a zombie is to not die and come back. <laughs> That's the best way to avoid being a zombie. Don't get bit by a zombie. Yeah. Don't die in a zombie world where you automatically turn into a zombie. And don't eat anything from pufferfish that's true don't go to haiti and eat pufferfish 
<laughs> there was a 007 movie where they where the where the voodoo guy was uh james bond had to defeat the voodoo guy because he was tricking all these people into thinking he was somebody powerful and he was just a trickster so 007 had to go in and you know pull out the golden gun so to speak and be all pew, pew, pew. yeah <laughs> he dressed like baron samedi and everything it was all oh yeah yeah zombies and about immortality because we can talk about the Haitians having the voodoo myth, but really the Jews did because the Jews brought people back and so did Jesus. He brought back Lazarus, but they weren't dead when they came back. They were still alive. And the magicians have a kind of ongoing myth sort of about that, that we've lost the recipe. We've lost the words necessary to bring someone back from the dead. And so things like turning them into zombies and vampires and things like that seems to be our only workaround for the fact that we don't know the magic behind how to bring somebody back from the dead. True. And I will add to this that I actually heard an alternative story I have to share, which is hilarious, ah. but that, uh, that, that it wasn't actually the Jesus of Nazareth oh. on the cross. It was a stand-in. Oh, and <laughs> nice. And so the actual one was in the tomb. Ah, so he's like, hey, hey, look, everybody, look at me. It's obvious I came back. But that is the alternative story. Well, so fun. It gets all fun. There is a lot all of the alternatives. I'm sure there I'm sure there is a little bit of smoke and mirrors with certain things when it comes to that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I'm sure of it. <laughs> so I have two songs, I guess, really to choose from as far as the wrap up song. One of them is a euphemism for hitting the hitting the dirt. It's called Kiss the Dirt. And the reason for the euphemism is it's a power of positive thinking song. It's about the fact that we all have some kind of cataclysm. We don't know when it's going to come or where it's going to come from and all this other stuff. And kissing the dirt is kind of like a salute to the fact that it doesn't matter what happened or will happen. I'm already willing to face it, right? That's what the song's about. Or this is a cover of another band that I didn't want to play the original band uh song because Dolores Reardon I I miss her she died and all that stuff so I don't want to hear her voice it makes me sad so yeah but um Miley Cyrus covered one of her songs yes and her alto version is just as nice you want to hear that one as a close out oh man they're both good you want to hear that version of it more than the Miley one? I know. And it's, oh, it is a great song. I know. And it's such a good song. I mean, the Cranberries, they really did justice to it. I know. It's so true. Okay, well, I do believe that this one's coming off of their best of album. And I'll go ahead and play that one as the close out. All right, here we go. Here we are. We are back. So yes. what, shall I tell that story of yes. my, my mother me. hates the word zombie? Yes. Why does she hate the word zombie? Well, Why? she hates the word zombie because for sure kids are mean. And yes, as a kid, sometimes. her last name um, is D of Dutch origin and it's Zalme, Z-A-L-M-E. And that's mm -hmm. from the hyphenated Von Zalme, which means fisherman, right? And the fish that's the fisher is the salmon right and that's mm -hmm. where zalmi comes from in the von zalmi as in fisherman right so oh. um growing up in the 1950s and, and 60s my mother in baltimore maryland kids used to tell her that she was a zombie like making oh, fun of her no. last name and all of this <laughs> other stuff when in and <laughs> so so i know for sure she hates the word zombie she hates it and i hate it for her but it's still a cool monster and yeah. it's still a cool concept and and the metaphor of a of a, a a thing that needs to be defeated that is this soulless enemy of humans and that i think is important too in the metaphor of it so and 
aren't there comics since you're the comic specialist that's true aren't there comics of you know oh zombie yeah comics oh yeah and there's zombie uh, apocalypses and there's okay. the zombies the walking dead zombies there's zombies like yeah yeah I, as a matter of fact the zombies once in an alternate universe did take over the entire marvel universe so spider-man has been a zombie iron man's been the hulk has been a zombie Oh, really? Yes, I know. That's horrible, right? Well, you <laughs> imagine the Hulk, zombie Hulk coming, crashing in. I imagine. <laughs> Me either. Some mm -hmm. people's imaginations can get away with them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, we should give ourselves our, our, our typical closeout plug. Yeah, thanks for listening. Yeah, yeah. everybody. Thank you. And um, yeah, this is Psychic Medium Tree. You can go online and see Psychic Medium Tree to be able to um, schedule your online by Zoom or FaceTime session. And um, as of course, as everybody um, who is listening to this already knows, it's on YouTube and aroundthemulberrybush.com, links to everything. Yeah. Cool. So till next time. Have a good one.